Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is December 25th, 2022. Merry Christmas! Hopefully this episode finds you well, whether it be actually Christmas on the day or not. Hopefully the vibes are very merry, uh, cheery and bright. I think that's how the song goes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, Let's see. Not much to report on the personal corner. I've been more or less semi-snowed in. Haven't done too much. Been hanging out. Uh, Yeah, I did get some, I got some pizza ordered. Uh, Shout out to Domino's for being super efficient, even in these trying times. I got a pepperoni pizza, a Italian hoagie, and uh, wings, bone-in. Even though, you know, I gotta say, the bone-in wings, you know, at Domino's aren't the best. Uh, You know, granted, on a fast food chain, they aren't the worst. So, I wasn't mad. wasn't mad. With blue cheese, by the way. Uh, Let's see. Also, I started adding pesto to, like, everything. So I just went nuts with that and olive oil. So, yeah, worth it. No regrets. No regrets. Um, anything else I wanted to report? No, not really. I'm going to be doing um, some Christmas stuff with some family friends later tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the roads are good enough now. I'm really hoping I'm going to, like, scout it out a little bit later. But, um, yeah, hopefully that goes down well. It's usually a good time, fun time. It's always a fun time. I always enjoy seeing them. It's nice. It's very wholesome, very high vibrational stuff. Um, I think I'm using that right. Yeah, maybe not. I'm getting too old for this shit. Um, let's get into the news, though. We, I, I stacked my plate here with news articles. Uh, I definitely went back for seconds. Shame on me. Uh, we'll see if I can, uh, you know, kind of zip through these all right, quick and quick and easy as you like. Uh, first is from the BBC News. Netherlands slavery. Saying sorry leaves Dutch divided. Uh, let's see. So Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root or Mike Rudy, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, said that slavery must be recognized in um, the clearest terms as a crime against humanity. Uh, This is a speech that he did in The Hague. Um, And, I mean, I think it was good that he did this apology. I guess I'm going to read a little bit more. Today I apologize for the past actions of the Dutch state, um, the past actions of the Dutch state to enslave people in the past. Um, Now, people are saying that they have a little bit of criticism for this, saying that it has a little bit of a colonial feel to it. Um... There have been groups that have come out saying, hey, you should actually push this apology back to July 1st of 2023, uh, which is the uh, 160th anniversary of the Emancipation Act. Um, Granted, that's just like a symbolic thing of, you know, what we're doing here with this apology, which is more or less just saying, hey, you know, sorry. Um, there is a counterpoint that the prime minister made that like time is of the essence that you don't necessarily know what the politics are going to be in 2023 and he might not be there to make this apology or the group might not the, the you know, the, the willing parties might not be there to say this kind of stuff. Um, then he also added to that, uh, he wanted the focus in next year to be about the Netherlands giving back and focusing on, you know, the projects and things of that nature. So, I mean, not to, like, side with the oppressor here, I, I do kind of get and understand that. Uh, you know, I, I think an, an apology is better than nothing, because honestly, it's not like it's going to change the past. You know, I, I do think dollars make make the most good in, the, in a capitalist society, you know. Um, but along with the formal apology, the Dutch government is expected to allocate 200 million euros um, or I don't care about pounds. I don't think you guys care about pounds, but I'm going to say it anyway. 175 million pounds. Ugh, gosh, Brexit has has just ruined everything. <laughs> uh, to awareness projects and pledged to spend uh, 27 million euros on a slavery museum. Um, they go on some more details and stuff about uh, the trafficking of African and um, Asian peoples by the Dutch merchants in the 17th and 19th centuries. Um, and there's more details and stuff that you can, you know, glean and look through. 
Um, it is an interesting read. I preferred this over, let's say, CNN's um, version of it. It was a lot shorter, uh, a little bit more clippier, but, you know, I guess I get it. It's you're, you're, you're appealing this to Americans who are just like, oh, what's going on over there? Okay, someone's saying sorry for slavery? Oh, ooh. So, you know, it is what it is. But I, I did want to talk about it here on the podcast. Um, also in Fiji, um, well, not, this, that was a bad segue. But in Fiji, there's some shit going down. And I was like, whoa, so it's more than water. Um, Associated Press, Fiji calls in military after close election is disputed. And then also there's a follow-up article here, um, from, also from the Associated Press. Rebuka sworn in as Fiji prime minister after close election. So it, it's been a really crazy week. Um, let's see if I can find the name. Yeah, Frank uh, Baini Marama. Um, he was the prime minister up until the end of this week. Um, he essentially was looking like he was going to form a military group like like he had called in the military um to you know i guess more or less enforce the elections make sure that things were going to be okay and there weren't going to be any like protests and things of that nature but both um what is it uh bane gosh i'm gonna have a really hard time with his name i'm sorry baney marama and then also uh rabuka are like two people who have like known to be a part of like you know political coups to like you know gain power what have you so i mean things are looking very tense um you know that's why i wanted to start definitely with this article that was an article i kind of found earlier this week and up until like you know actually you know pressing play i was like oh shit like it looks like things literally turned over like yesterday as of saturday christmas eve so you know, things were very tense, um, and this was like a coalition vote to figure out who was going to be in power, and it was like literally like a one-man decision, and I think initially like someone had changed and switched up, and so it was like, uh-oh, but then they did another election, and then uh, Rabuka still maintained power, hence there was like a little bit of diciness because the guy's like, mm, I don't know, it seems fishy, the being Rama guy, but um, it seems that uh, Rabuka has, you know, solidified power. Um, he said he's talked to um, Bain Rama, or Baini, Ra- Baini Rama, oh my gosh, Baini Rama, and, you know, said, hey, you know, we appreciate what you guys have done. Um, you know, you guys, thank you for your service, yada, yada, yada. But essentially now we're in power and we want to, you know, improve upon what they haven't and then you know see what we can do with the budget that we have for the next um i can't remember if they said months or years uh, i think it was months uh, do, 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 um but yeah i did find it interesting because it, it is one of those things that's it's kind of the murkiness of politics especially for me like i'm definitely a neophyte to this shit still so I come in to certain regions and stuff. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know shit was popping off of Fiji. I didn't know the political climate or the history, you know. So I come in very green on some of these stories. And it's nice to just kind of learn alongside of my listeners as I, you know, I say the shit. Um, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, secret ballot of lawmakers on Saturday chose Rebuka 28 to 27. The result indicated that one member of the new ruling coalition was against the change in prime minister. Um, so yeah, someone was definitely trying to hold out, but, you know, hey. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I really wanted to cover here? Nah, we're good. Uh, moving along to California. Um, there were some earthquakes. Uh, let's see. The story from Reuters. Magnitude 6.4 quake shakes Northern California, leaves two dead, thousands without power. So, you know, look, I'm a guy, you know, Midwesterner, you know, living in good old Ohio. I'm not used to too many earthquakes. I do think we did have one this year, um, but I didn't notice, and it was like a really low scale one. So, you know, whenever I hear something like a 6.4 earthquake i'm like oh shit especially in america i feel like that's just not common now apparently you know learning or reading this article 
apparently it is a little bit more common than I expected, but still, this one was a really big one. Um, it was a 6.4, um, as and this, this happened Tuesday. And then there was also a bunch of like aftershocks. I think, yeah, it was about 80 aftershocks, uh, was centered 215 miles or 350 kilometers, uh, north of San Francisco, offshore of Humboldt County, a largely rural area known for its redwood forests, local seafood um, lumber industry and dairy farms, and also marijuana, humble county. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's see. There were two deaths that were reported, but they were like medical um, emergencies. So essentially, I think people were having like uh, medical issues, and people weren't able to get to them, and they were like older. Um, they, they were like elderly people. So, you know, definitely sad, um, but it's just one of those things where it's, like, they're tangentially tied to the quake, but not necessarily, like, someone died in the earthquake. But the earthquake definitely did a lot of damage, turned over a lot of houses. Um, you saw, like, a lot of pavement in rows just, like, completely fissured and cracked. Um, so, let's see. Tuesday's Trembler set off one structure fire by severing gas line uh, severing the gas line of the hot water heater and caused at least two other buildings to collapse. Uh, the blaze quickly extinguished and fire crews rescued a resident briefly trapped in the home, according to f uh, fire officials. So definitely a lot of damage, very scary. Um, they have uh, some testimonials from you know people who went through the earthquake in the article. Um, um, so yeah, um, yeah, that's all I want to cover. That's it. I'm good there. <laughs> I'm trying to just kind of clop through here. Um, let's see. This is a bit of a halfway point. I'm going to read this. It's actually really short. Um, got this from the NPR. Wells Fargo to pay $3.7 billion over mistreatment of its customers. Uh, Wells Fargo will pay $3.7 billion to settle charges for wrongfully seizing homes and cars. This is the largest penalty ever imposed by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Now, um, that's all I'm really, really going to do on the coverage here. There is a three-minute listen on this NPR article that you can you know listen to if you'd like. Also, there's a Bloomberg article as well, but I didn't feel like fiddling around with like my login subscription bullshit um, just to have one measly article. Uh, fuck Bloomberg. <laughs> uh, on that note, I'm going to take a little break. And yeah, we got a little bit more to cover. This one from Good Morning America. Chainsaw wielding man storms police station, holds two children hostage before arrest, police say. So, this was a very interesting story to me. Uh, Brian Buckley, 35 years old. Um, I don't know why. I don't know the motive. I, I didn't get too much outside of this article in terms of information. But apparently this man decided that he was going to be on his chainsaw man this week and um this took like last sunday night and um yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah so it took place last sunday night and he goes into a massachusetts police station um i believe it is the cohasset police station um and he drives up on the lawn and he has a gas power chainsaw and he runs in and I think he was, like, trying to use a chainsaw to, like, get access to, like, a certain room or something like that. Um, he attempted to cut through the security door of the lobby of the police station. So who knows what he was planning on doing. But um, he wasn't able to do that. He flees. Um, Buckley fled the police station to a resident in a residence in Cohasset. Cohasset 
where he allegedly barricaded himself inside with two small children. So that's where the plot really thickens. Obviously, I'm sure you're hearing like, whoa, chainsaw, and now what? Now there's hostages? What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, this is a zip-zop kind of fucking story we have here. Um, but let's see, at one point, and also there's allegedly throughout this whole article, and obviously in this podcast, I got to say that, um, but at one point, Buckley allegedly dangled the children from a second story window while yelling at the officers on the ground, according to the release. So, I mean, this is a crazy fucking situation that's unfolding here. Um, I believe they have like negotiators on scene trying to talk to him. Eventually, they um, forcibly enter the home. They wind up tasing him and they get him into custody. Um, and the children were safe. So, I mean, all in all, it's a good story. Um, that's mainly the reason why I'm a little bit lighthearted here, but I mean, shit, man, like, <laughs> that's fucking wild. Uh, people get really active with chainsaws, I guess. I mean, I remember playing Vice City, and I remember that was, like, a cool thing. I get to be on my Scarface shit, like, oh, shit. But I also play with, like, a samurai sword and a rocket launcher. These aren't practical things, though, to use in the real world. So, um, I don't know what dude was thinking when he ran in there and decided to get all those wanted stars. Um, but yeah, shame on you, Buckley. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to go to the tank for that one. Uh, let's see. Speaking of people who are going to the tank, um, an Associated Press, uh, officer gets nearly 12 years for killing at, at a Tanya, um, Jefferson. Now, this is a story I started coverage in my Patreon, and um, I didn't get a uh, sentencing yet at the time when I recorded, so I was waiting, and uh, their, uh, the sentencing did come through, and it looks like he is going to be deal- uh let's see, it is 11 years, 10 months, and 12 days. So, um, Adetania Jefferson, she was shot. Um, through a rear window of her home in 2019. That was a part that I did get messed up from the Patreon, so I guess you say this is a correction corner. I thought it was like a potential shootout situation, but it looks like the only discrepancy was it was um, Aaron Dean, who's 38. Um, he um, winds up trying to come up to the home. This was a non-emergency um, call from another resident because the door was left open. Now, the door was left open because Jefferson and her nephew, um, Zion, um, they were cooking hamburgers. Zion, he uh, overcooked the hamburgers. You know, they were, you know, airing out the house. Those things kind of happen, especially, you know, you're living in a, just, I don't know. It's, it's, this is, there's a lot of conversation points I feel like that goes over people who are like, quote unquote, middle class, like, you know, above a certain grade, whatever. And they just don't think about these little fucking things. And they always kind of fucking add up to like a huge disaster. And it really is a fucking shame that because of a cop's fucking just prejudice, in my opinion, that he makes this just terrible fucking call and doesn't do actual procedure and at least someone's death. But anyway, let me continue the story. Essentially, um, they get called. It is Dean and another officer. Um, They get up on the scene. Now, Dean, who also testifies, not in this article, but once again, reference from the Patreon, um, he says that he can kind of see that the house is dirty or from, like, you know, his approach that the house is dirty. Um, So he thinks that there's a burglar on the scene and that they're already there. And so that's why he doesn't announce himself or do anything but essentially, he just immediately reacts because, in his words, I believe he says he sees a gun. But, uh, what is it? His um, partner does not see it. And then, because he guess she had her back turned. Um, and then he pulls the trigger, shoots her, doesn't do any kind of first aid. She winds up dying. Um, obviously, the nephew sees this. Um, and essentially, though, I mean, he was facing up to potentially 20 years in prison or potentially he could have been sentenced to probation. So this is why it was a big deal. And I was very curious to see how this anything was going to go. Um, so getting about 12 years, really, it's 11. And honestly, it's probably be less with good behavior or whatever the fuck. Um, it's something that, you know, you'll take over nothing. Um, he was convicted of manslaughter. Um, this is on Thursday. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it, it really is sad. Um, you know, this is a woman, 28 years old. She had her life ahead of her. I believe she wanted to get into the medical field. Um, and now, yes, uh, there was talks of like whether or not a gun was involved. Um, I think that's something that people wanted to get caught up on. And one, you're allowed to have a gun thanks to our grand old constitution. And two, there's definitely a situation where you have a cop or, you know, uh, two law, you know, officers who haven't announced their presence and are, you know, encroaching, uh, encroaching on your home. So what are you to think you're supposed to think that these are intruders? Um, I think a civilian's quote unquote misinterpretation is way different than a cop's misinterpretation and failure to due diligence. Um, I don't know. I, I think that definitely to an extent justice is served. I, you know, I would definitely always like to see more for this kind of shit, but um, I'm glad it's something rather than nothing. Um, <laughs> that's all we got for that. Um, I wanted to finish this up on an update. Um, I guess we can say, yeah, this is some sports news. Sports news on a cremas. Look at me go. Um, I'm going to treat myself to one more break and then I'll get back to you. Whoa, yeah. Mm. Okay, we're back. Um, I got this from AZ Central. Um, also, the AZ is short for Arizona. Yeah, I think so. Maybe I'm wrong. Jeez, I hope I didn't say that. I was completely eating at. Yeah, Arizona. It's definitely Arizona. I'm not. I'm not that dumb, guys. <laughs> um, sons, Michigan billionaire uh, mortgage mortgage lender. <coughs> oh, oh, it hit me. Uh, Michigan billionaire mortgage lender Matt Ishiba to purchase Phoenix Suns for record $4 billion. Cash money, baby. So this is an update. We've talked about the Suns before this year. Um, essentially, Robert Sawyer, he was put on um, suspension for a year for... Um, I guess you could say misconduct. I think that's what they put it as. But essentially, he was uh, getting a little too colorful and fresh with um, his staff and employees, making a lot of uh, racially charged statements, if you will, um, really being out of pocket. So essentially, um, he was suspended. And then also there was calls for him to step down entirely from being the owner now, granted, he had purchased the Suns for millions of dollars. Uh, the number is here. This isn't the greatest site, so I hope it doesn't like shut down on me. Oh yeah, he was also fined ten million dollars, and it was a uh, workplace misconduct and organizational deficiencies. Um, he purchased it for a hundred and one million dollars. And now, yes, it's being bought for $4 billion by um, Matt Yeshiba. Um, let's see. He has a quote. Um, I'm extremely excited to be the next governor of the Phoenix Suns and Mercury. Both teams have an incredibly dynamic fan base, and I have loved experiencing the energy of the Valley over the last few months. Uh, basketball is at the core of my life from high school days as a player to... The honor of playing for Coach Tom Izzo and winning a national title at Michigan State University. I spent the last two decades building um, my mortgage business, United Wholesale Mortgage, into one mortgage lender in America. And I'm confident that we can bring that same level of success to these great organizations on and off the floor. Okay, dokey. <laughs> um... So yeah, yada, 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 this guy's going to be the new boss. Uh, hopefully he doesn't say anything st stupid. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, some more details in here. Um, you know me, guys. I'm not I'm not a big sports go ball guy, but this is an update, and I wanted to uh, bring it up. Oh, my gosh. Look at us go. I did this really fast in a zip, quick as you like. <laughs> um, that's more or less all we got. 
Um, thank you for tuning in for this episode. I'm sorry it's not too Christmassy or anything special. The news is just kind of is what it is. I, I guess I could have found some like special like, you know, Christmas edition shit. But I didn't want to be hokey. I just wanted to, you know, give it to you straight. I had shit to talk about. So, um, you know, thank you for listening. I really hope that if you are listening to this on Christmas Day, that you have an amazing day, an amazing time. Hopefully it's filled with um, warmth and love. Um, In the day, I know it's not about all the gifts and all that bullshit. It's really about the people you have around you. And even if you're spending it alone, um, obviously, hey, I'm doing that too. Um, That's okay. That's great. It's great that you've made it you know, around the board, if you will. And, um, it, I hope that we get to do it again together, you know, and you're not alone. Even if you are just by yourself, it really is about who you have in your orbit. It's who you have in your space. Uh, I always say that that's one of the good things about the internet that sometimes people are just a click away if you ever need to talk. So, um, yeah, um, not to be too parasocial or whatever. Um, I'm always here. Um, you know, I do have a Gmail, if you will, Isaiah News one at gmail.com. If you're a real one, if you're a friend, you know how to contact me. You know how to hit me up. I'm here for you. Um, but yeah, there's, there's all kind of ways. And, um, I hope you, you're just going to have a good one. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're rounding up into the next year from here. Um, that, that's a whole other vibe. You know, we can do that next next set of episodes, if you will. But yeah, I really do hope that you have a great Christmas and a great time and that you're doing well. Um, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.